Hey everyone, I'm Eric. This is my wife, Julie. We are The Blended Life. Hey you guys, and today we are answering some of your questions and asks for advice. Enjoy. Welcome back. We'll just jump into this one. Yeah, today we are taking questions and and answering what's going on with your family. So this is one of my favorite weeks that we do um, in our in our podcasting series. So the first one's actually interesting. <laughs> Someone wrote in and said, "I don't know why nobody talks about blending animals." Oh, she's I guess like, we never really dealt with that. So. Right, and, and she's like, this is something I've searched for and searched for and searched <laughs> for, and nobody's talking about that. And so she wrote me a really long, beautiful, beautifully descriptive accounting of how much it's it's so hard for her with his dogs and her dogs. Um, and it's just, it's so interesting. So I, I right off the bat, what do you have, if anything, to say about blending uh, no, animals? Like, <laughs> yeah, that would have been, that's a crazy thing to think of. You don't yeah. think of that. Like if you would have had cats, I would have been like, I'm out. That's not happening. So you're it saying <laughs> if I had cats, yep. you would not have married me. I wouldn't have even dated you. <laughs> Listen to the crickets. Where's the crickets? There they are. No, fair. And I think that animals are really important. Yeah. They're an important part of people's lives. Right. And um or they can ruin people's lives. Like I'm so deathly allergic to cats, not like deathly literally, but like my parents had a cat that died what close to a year ago and I'm still allergic to their house because of this cat. You know what I mean? And like my eyes swell up in water and my nose runs and I just I'm miserable. Yeah. Um but then you also think about it like okay, well Maybe we didn't have cats. Maybe we're all dog people, but now, like, we have little dogs right now, but even if you brought a big dog in the house, our little dogs are going to dominate because <laughs> they're just evil little critters. <laughs> so, Yeah. Um, animals, well, to your point, uh, even when you talk about the cat and how you're allergic still after, you a know, year. a year, I mean, animals really do affect quality of life right and I think that you know when this woman wrote in because she gave me a list of examples of how the way he is with his dogs is very different than the way she is with hers and because of that the dogs have different um temperaments different the way they they feed the way yeah, they kennel eating schedules the where, you can it's have all different, different training you know uh, barking all night long versus not barking all yeah. night long and I'm like, I just, that's what came up for me. I'm like, wow, animals really do affect the quality of life. Or how about like, I'm sure everyone's thinking it already. Like some dogs or animals are inside pets and some are outside pets. Some are on, no, no, not on furniture. Others are like sleep in bed with you. And like, wow, there's a lot to really unpack there. Yeah. And, and the thing that in my coaching practice, what we talk about a lot is the way you do one thing is the way you do all Everything. things. And so she also wrote in on another topic, which we're not going to get to today, but it's interesting because the way it is with his dogs, I would say, probably translates into some of the way he parents. Yeah, with, with the kids. Correct. For sure. So, and and I don't think that they are married, um, but what I will say is if you are blending your family and there are animals involved it is a really great idea to like be observant and to really take into account how these animals a animals are um, raised by their owner. It's very telling, uh, you know, very telling of how the owner is going to treat. You know, it's like when you go on a date, you always want to see how your date treats the wait the waitress or waiter. Right. Because usually the way you do one thing is the way you do all things. And that comes out. Interesting. I've never I've never I mean, I've known that saying and I've known that. But like, 
dating younger, I never thought of it that way. And now that I look at it that way, I'm like, if I would have just looked at that one thing, it would have saved me <laughs> years and years. Yeah, how, do you, how does the person <laughs> you're choosing treat other people? Yeah. People who they're what an epiphany. in service. What an absolute epiphany. So, but the way, so let's just say like the other, well, wow, that was a lot of jumble. This we is, have a this neighbor. This is our weekend. We had, you guys, we are celebrating our five-year anniversary and we had we didn't even go anywhere our we didn't wedding do anything. anniversary yeah like yeah. Our, our mine and julie's anniversary and i'm exhausted from just hanging out for a day <laughs> <laughs> it hasn't even been 24 hours it has it. We need drool cups <laughs> yeah well, listen to us like we're you know and then we went on what like a four mile walk this morning yeah so, yeah that's all right but what <laughs> i was gonna say is our neighbor um had two dogs and then they right. got a third dog right and she has had like a trainer come in and she's had people come in. to. So this is the first piece of advice that if you are blending animals and you really want this relationship to work, you might get outside help from a professional who knows about dogs and packs of dogs. Because what she learned was bringing this third one in heightened tension because there's an order to a pack. Yeah. You know, and it's it's dogs discern that differently. And I'm not a dog professional. Uh, I don't really know what I'm talking about. You tried about. to get us to go get a new dog this weekend. Yeah, three is not great. No, it's not at all. <laughs> Just like so, children, you guys. <laughs> so, I mean, if it's something that you... So first, be observant and see, can you live with this, right? And, and understand that the way that these dogs are being raised and, and, and cared for probably will translate into a, lo- a lot of other areas of your life. If you're still like... This is my person. I would bring in somebody who knows about the animals that you're trying to blend and and get some resources, right? We're not created to do life on our own. Go figure it out with professionals who um, can actually come into your home and, and bring these animals together and kind of assess the the, pe- the pecking order and the personalities and, and see what you can do. I'm not kidding because it's, it's helpful. <laughs> it's, I, I, yeah, our I neighbor know. did this and it was That's really wild. helpful. Um, and, and the way it's playing out from what she wrote in was like, and this is a dangerous thing and it's the, it can be dangerous. So basically it's like living separately together now. So now the dogs are living separate lives. Do they keep them in like different areas? So this is interesting. Husband or fiance or significant other, I forget, um, takes his dogs to his mom's house so dogs while he's at work. Okay. And then the picks day. them up on the way home hmm. and brings them home. And her dog or dogs have to stay at the house all day. So their their dogs are doing life separate. Yeah, but this is almost like but doggy the, doggy daycare, you know, and elementary school and like these are like little children, which we all know this. If you have pets, you guys know that this is having pets is like having infants that never grow up you know and there's some people that get theirs trained really well and it actually works out good so that's a that's a great thing but if you're like us and just have dogs that just run the roost it gets wild and it stays wild (laughs) it never really goes away but you see how this translates into children because i would i would assume i would bet that the that the way he that they're the children are going to be raised the same in that house, very separately. I don't know. Our our dogs have way more order and obedience than our children. No, but they're, if they're raising their dogs separately mm-hmm. and treating their dogs oh, differently in yeah. the home, like one gets table scraps and one is strict other diet, right. and they they one goes away and gets to play all day in a, a yard, and the other one is caged all day at home. You know, they're literally doing life differently with these dogs. Right. And that will translate into the kids. Now, that can work. Right. It totally could. It's just, it's a beast of an, it's it's a hill you're going to climb every day. It's hard. Yeah, until you figure it out. So, yeah. wow, this is wild. This is blowing Blending my mind. Blending animals. <laughs> I feel like it's a great opportunity to learn about what your future looks like, though, right? Yeah. And you have to say, like, if nothing changes, and this is, I tell the clients this all the time, if nothing changes, are you going to be okay? If you choose this person forever, I think they're engaged now that I am remembering this email. Um, if nothing changes, and this is how 
you guys are going to choose to raise your dogs, never mind kids together, are you going to be good? It could change, right, when people want to. Right. But that's the other thing. Unless your fiancé wants things to change, they're not going to. Right? Much like unless you want things to change, they're not going to. And you could talk to your blue in the face and you can cry all the tears you want to cry and yell all the obscenities you want to yell and you can threaten all you want to threaten. But at the end of the day, people only change when they want to. Right. It doesn't matter. Right? Agreed. So good luck blending animals. It isn't something that I've ever even consider okay. discussing but it's a great question because it you is. Learn are, we a lot. are we kind of leaving it there like <laughs> this is i don't know it's yeah we're moving on to the next okay. question but i would wow. love i would love feedback so if you guys are listening to this and you have blended animal stories write in um comment below our our video if you're watching on youtube or wherever you can comment this is very interesting topic okay next piece of advice did you write that all in like extremely bold font so you could read it i just printed it i printed That's it like wild. this it's huge i know okay. so good for my old eyes um this person writes in and says needing some advice for the first time in eight years we are doing something with my husband's ex uh oh <laughs> hopefully it's not blending the exes <laughs> yeah. um so we're doing something with my husband's ex okay her fiance and her family Interesting. It's a big old family reunion. Yeah. <laughs> it is it, a season for graduation. We can talk yeah, a little bit about that yeah. afterwards. Um, how do I go into this with an open mind and an open heart when I'm hurt from the way they treated me in the past? Yeah. Bio mom and her fiance found Jesus and want all of us to be one big happy family. I honestly don't know a lot about them. Just what happened. Just what husband and my husband's family has said about her, and obviously not good things. Anyone struggle with this or been through this? I need some help. Yep. We all have. Pray tell. Right? Haven't we? Yeah, I think one of the hardest thing co-parenting <laughs> as a Christian, as a Christian family, yeah. when you're co-parenting with other Christian families. Mm -hmm. I think it's a it's a great opportunity to be like where's God and where's God in in your where's God in your actions where's God in your behaviors like that's where I tend to go right that, well what bugs where's, me about Christian family doing this with Christian family and I don't know if she's ex Christian well, or not okay but. but still people expect more because it's two Christian families I'm like if there's Christian anything if you call yourself Christian anything you should always expect more I don't care if these other people are satan devil worshipers you know what i mean well like, she's saying it, these people are now right, right which is Jesus, great but right? but my point is if you call yourself christian anything it shouldn't matter where the other people stand so whether the whether the other family is christian or not this shouldn't matter like if you hold yourself to a standard hold yourself to a standard regardless of what else and i see where this is going because it's like okay well they have found jesus and, they and are now, now they want to be all. Yeah. And, and yeah. Okay. Kumbaya. Great. 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 But just because now we have a, a common interest and a common belief doesn't mean that we need to have common excitement for each other. You can still love them. You can still love them from a distance. Doesn't mean that you need to text each other or call each other. And do you see where I'm going with this? This doesn't mean that we need to be all super kumbaya with one another. We can be cordial, and that's what we should be called as Christians. Who, who I am going to speak for myself, and only myself on this. Not even for you, is that I don't care if my ex is Christian, isn't Christian, uh, goes to church, doesn't go to church. What she's doing, I call myself a Christian, so I treat them with respect to a certain point of if I'm I feel like I'm not going to treat them with respect or I feel like I don't want to be around them or I don't want to deal with them because of where it's going I will just lower the temperature and walk away now just because I'm one way and they're one way doesn't mean that I treat them any different than I would anyone else so my point to all of this is if you are okay with them. Hopefully this what hopefully what this does is takes you guys from the negative and brings you back up to just an even playing field. Just because you might be a Christian and now they're Christian doesn't mean you guys need to go up into that 
plus positive, hanging out with each other, going to church with each other, celebrating, being one big family. Because at the end of the day, we aren't all one big family anymore, right? Like truly. There's a lot of different a, I know. I'm like, thoughts go. on that. That's your opinion though, and that's okay. There's there's more than no, one way to do blended uh, of family course. life. Of course, right? and there's and there's so. so many ways. And that's again, that's why I'm just speaking for myself. In my opinion, where I do and how I do with this, I'm not like, oh, cool, it's our kid's birthday party. Let's go plan something with the other family and have like some big family reunion <laughs> thing together. I'm like, no, cool. You guys plan your thing. I'm going to respect that. We're going to plan our thing. I'm going to respect that. If we run into each other, if we happen to sit each other, sit next to each other at the birthday party, or as you just said, it's graduation season. If we're if we're by one another. I'm not going to sit there and glare at you and talk trash to you and cause problems. I'm going to be like, hey, how's it going? Make maybe some small chit chat, but that's the extent of our relationship. I'm just going to leave it there. Yeah. Just you're, like. You're really, you really true to your word. What you're saying right now is it's not just bullshit. You live that out. And it's so hard. <laughs> yeah, but you're you know what? You're so, so amazing, even keeled and respectful. But it's about treating, it's, really it's about treating everyone the same you know you may have wronged me you may have done some terrible horrible things to me in the past and that's the place that you were at then you know I'm not some perfect person who's lived some absolutely perfect life and we're called to extend grace on people around us mm -hmm. but doesn't mean that we are called to be in full-blown relationship with these people Love thy neighbor, but doesn't mean go make love to thy neighbor. <laughs> you know, what dear I mean? God. Okay, <laughs> don't go make love to thy neighbor. To thy neighbor. <laughs> um, yeah, I think I'll speak for myself. So this is where it gets really hard for me because it's I I do too. Like most of the world, you hear the word Jesus and Christian, and you and you should hold people to the standard yep. that 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 title a, a christian right a christ now should you follower hold, yeah now should you hold other people to that standard or should you hold yourself to that standard well i i see where you're going uh, uh -huh. thank you for at, like yes i know the <laughs> correct answer no i know place. the correct answer as everyone right. else but so the hardest part for me is um d you know do unto others Right. That's a that's a biblical principle. Do unto others as you would have others do unto you. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love God, love others. Right. Like this is the basic fundamentals of Christianity. And so when you hear that somebody loves Jesus and they this this could be an open door. Also, in our co-parenting relationship, every all of our co-parents love Jesus. And they're not perfect. Right. And I think that's that's the point I'm trying to make here and that I've learned. Right. I'm certainly not perfect. And I love Jesus. And I man, I, I hold on to unforgiveness. I've shared that with you guys. I hold on to judgment sometimes. Well, that's I, what I was just about I to get say. Offended. Thou shall not cast a judgment. And that's yeah. where I think a lot of hypocrisy yep. bleeds into Christianity. Yeah, for sure. Well, and, and this is the thing about Christianity is this tons of grace, right? Like God gives us grace for all of the our mishaps and and things that we do on a daily basis, you know, if if you're forgiven and you have been extended grace, how do you not pay that forward? So I think how you keep the question was like how does she go into this with an open heart and open mind? I would say be hopeful, right? Because if they're if their title is a Christian, Christ follower, and they love Jesus, I would say there's tremendous amount of hope there. So be hopeful. And understand that these people do not walk on water. So I think you just walk in hope. And whenever there is hope, you can have an open heart and open mind. You know, and whenever there is grace, the same thing. You know, just because they love Jesus does not mean they're going to be perfect. It does not mean the first time you're all together is going to go smoothly and swimmingly. You know, Christians are still humans and have feelings and have struggles and have temptations. And so what I think you do is just you go into this hoping for the best, guarding your heart, right? And not jump in the deep end with, with no floaty, right? And you're not going to stand on shore either. You're going to kind of like wade in waist deep, right? Like we're in the water, we're not up to our neck and we're not out of it. We're just kind of like... 
we're, we're kind of feeling it out a little bit, getting the temperature. Right. And you go cautiously optimistic. That's how I would I would say that. And, you know, we are going through that as our family, you know, graduation. Um, the end of the school year is really different, I feel, since before even COVID. This is the first year where things seem kind of normal again with school, like end of the year activities are full force. Kids are going on buses to grad nights again. Um, there's all these there's all these celebrations and everything is kind of like coming back into the to normalcy as much as it can. And we are having to be around people now again that we've been able to avoid <laughs> <laughs> for the last few years. Yeah. yeah. And um, it is cautiously optimistic, right? It is cause like, I don't want to be the cause of drama, you know? So I just stay in my lane. And if that looks like I take a back seat, even sometimes to my own son for his sake, that's what I do because of, my moral value system and, and what I believe and what I'm choosing to live into. So I think it's just really what is the experience you want to have and then you have to act accordingly. And I don't know, that's kind of my thoughts on that. Anything else to add? Nope. Okay. Nailed it. Nailed it. Next one. Um, this person says, parents, do you ask that your kids say, I love you? to your significant other when they initiate it. I've never asked my kids or my stepkids to say it. It's definitely what me and my bio kids do, but my stepkids are less comfortable saying it back, and that's okay with me. Dealing with an issue with my ex almost always requiring that our kids say I love you to his significant other. They do, but they say it feels fake, And they don't want to rock the boat, so they go along with it. I have no issue with it at all if they want to say it and mean it. And there's just, because there's not enough love in this world, but they shouldn't feel coerced, right? Yeah, and it's going to become icky. It's going to become, if it feels fake right now, it it is fake. If it feels fake, it is fake. And that's, that's the thing. And... From our point of view and our standpoint, you know, if we consistently tell someone that we love them or tell our stepkids that we love them, then that's consistency and that, that'll get ingrained in them. And whether they say it back or not, it doesn't matter. Like, I don't, I don't love my stepkids because they love me. I love my stepkids because I love my stepkids. Whether they love me or not isn't dependent on a few simple words, you know, that have meaning. But if the meaning's not actually there and you're making them say this, then it's going to become a, it's going to become an issue. It's going to become a point of detrimental topic later that is only going to become a burden to your relationship. So forcing a kid to do anything like that, forcing a kid to give you hugs, give step parent hugs, give you kisses, whatever it is, you know, just becomes an icky thing eventually if it's not genuine. So in my opinion, again, just me, I can tell my stepkids I love them all day long. If they don't say it back to me, I'm not offended by it because I'm not forcing them to say this. Now, if I force these kids to say this to me, then that is basically just being a ruler over a land and them just becoming slaves and servants to these words. You know what I mean? <laughs> to be a little extreme, but, mm-hmm. you know, to forcing anyone to say anything. You know, if your spouse didn't genuinely love you, you basically force them into telling you that they loved you, and you force them into marrying you, and you force them to sleep with you, and you force them to do the dishes or go to work or bear children for you. At the end of the day, they just become slaves, right? And how happy do you think that relationship or marriage is going to be? So at the end of the day, this is a, this is a relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And every, when you keep saying the word forced. Yeah. The, so what forcing anyone to do anything that they don't necessarily feel like they want to do, or it's genuine, builds some sort of resentment. It totally will. And resentment really is like those bitter roots that grow up and um, 
man, the thicker and, and, and wider and more growth the vine gets, it's harder to, to connect, right? Yeah, disconnect, yeah, and break free. Yeah, and so forcing, I, I, I think I wrote, this was a, a blended life support group question. Okay. And I wrote back to her and I just, you know, this is, if you've been listening to me for a long time, you know that um, I'm a step child since a year old. Um, I never knew my parents together. I always grew up with the same set, actually, of, of parents. So, um, and I was forced to call my stepmom, mom. Yeah. We had to. It was an expectation. And I, you know, um, and I think what I wrote back is like, when you're forced to fake something, you lose respect, right? And I always thought like, who's the kind of person that that's insecure and like <laughs> is forcing me to call you something that you're just not? And that's just also yeah, my personality. And, and, well, like I'm a very truthful. And like, how, how was that for your relationship? Did that make you go like, yes, this is my mommy? Like, No, but like she, like it was, I am you are my daughter, I am your mom, yeah. in, like, all the ways. Yeah, and it was but I'm just, saying over the, over the testament of time, like, how did that work out? How did that, did that play in favor for her, or did that become a detriment no, to what I saw No, what I saw her was, and, you know, I have tremendous respect for her now that I am a stepmother myself, so before I say anything, in case she ever listens to this or her family listens to this, um... Man, I will say about my stepmom, she really took care of me. She 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 made sure I had fun. She clothed me. She fed me. We used to watch soap operas together. Like it wasn't all bad. I don't want to paint her. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to paint her as somebody. She was very involved, right? She was the mother figure. She really, she really took care of me as as one of her own. And I will say, as a stepmom now, like. That must have been really hard. Like, also, like I have such a yeah, but all of that, of respect. Right, I, I but, just want to respect her. But all first. of that being said, how did that play into your relationship? Did that hinder it a little bit? Did it hinder it a lot? Did it help your relationship? What did well, it do? I don't think I'm. I don't think I'm out of line. Or all all step kids understand their step parents aren't their actual parents, right? <laughs> like, right, yeah. I so I don't think that. Growing up, I always thought it was stupid because I'm like, you're, I have to call you mom, but you're not my mom. And I think that's pretty normal, right? Because it wasn't my choice too. I think that when kids make that decision and really want to call the, the other, I have a friend who her stepdaughters uh -huh. like want to call her mom. Mm -hmm. And at first she was like, oh, I don't think your your mom would appreciate that. Right. And over time, she's kind of accepted that they just they just wouldn't let it go. They're like, we want to call you mom, and so now, they do. so now, but that's different. Yeah, that was on their own. I mean, on their own terms, that was my, their choice. My oldest, who you guys know if you've listened to us for a long time, isn't my biological. I've just raised her since she was really little. Never ever at any point forced her or told her to call me dad. You know, she yeah. made up her own little nickname for me when I was when she was young. Yeah. And that was fine for a little while. And then after a few years, just started calling me dad. And it's always been that. And it was never forced. And um, even to this day, you know, it's still, she's almost 21, but it's still her option. She can call me whatever she wants, you know, and it's, uh, and it's natural. But once you start forcing kids or anyone, mm -hmm. you know, go, uh, Go talk to your spouse and go, you know, like, I'm going to tell you, like, I need you to start calling me master. <laughs> right? But also that's, you know. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it's just, it's like. Yeah. That's not my choice for you. No. We would not be together <laughs> also. Um, Whatever, peasant. Yeah. <laughs> So, and, and so we say, we're, I know we're talking about titles and calling each other yeah. mom, but I think I love you is no different, right? Like forcing a kid to say, I love you would be it to me. It's no different than forcing a child to call you something you're not yep. forcing a child to make a declaration about you that they may not feel yet is something that is wrong. And on some level, I'm going to call it abusive, Right. On some level, it's a mind fuck because now you're teaching your children to say to like proclaim things to people that they don't really mean maybe to get what they want. And this all feels very manipulative. So, I mean, as a parent, 
or a step parent, if you're struggling with this, think outside just this relationship and what are you instilling in the children here, how they're going to go out in the real world and do relationships. You know, are you seeding manipulation? Are you seeding toxicity? Are you seeding that fake, like like this fake disingenuine, meaningless thing is going to, is what it's all about. And I think you have to really, so, you know, bio parents, we're going to do an upcoming episode on bio for, for bio parents. Um, and this is something you really, I'm going to ask for you to think about, like fight for your children's well being. right? You tell your kids, I tell my daughter when she struggles with the other home, like you're your own advocate kid, right? Like at some point you're going to have to stand up for yourself, right? And not just give in to everything that is presented to you. I don't care. You're going to have to start standing up for yourself. And so I, I, that would be my advice if this was me and I'm dealing with my child and they were being forced to say, I love you. I would tell, I would suggest not. Right. And I would say, and if you're, if you're, if your biological father had a problem with that, we could certainly have, I will talk to your father on your behalf. Right. Yeah. So you stand up for yourself and then if you know, direct your dad to me, I'm happy to take that on. Right. I'm happy because I am your parent. So I think forcing a kid to say, I love you is manipulative. Yeah. The fruit is resentment and it seeds all kinds of weird stuff for them later in life. So I don't think it's okay. In my opinion, what do I know? In your humble opinion. Last, last one. And then we're going to wrap up this episode. Um, Opinions on entire blended families supporting extracurricular activities. Background is we have four teens between us, two mine, two his. Between all of them, there are a lot of activities over the year, as you can imagine, and they go to different schools. Do you make your kids go to their step-siblings activities to watch slash support them and vice versa? An example of this is that both of my kids do marching band at a state level and have several competitions over the fall. Four of them this year will fall on our kid weekends and we will be out of town about an hour away from our house. How does your family handle these types of things? Does everyone have to go? No complaints. Does only bio parent go? Does step parent go? And I leave teen kids home all day that don't want to go. The schedule gets very chaotic and we end up with limited time together as a couple because of kids' activities. <laughs> For the most part, I want to be together, but I feel like the kids really don't enjoy it unless it's their thing. Yeah, no one does. <laughs> but the, the point of this and the way I think that we cross this is encouraging kids, encouraging the family to show up for the rest of the family. Um, doesn't always need to be a a strict golden rule. And I think a lot of people get hung up on this. Um, at least, you know, we have in our family and I don't think that it needs to be like, you have to go to everything. Every kid has to go to everything. Um, but I think it's important that the kids show up for the other kids in the family ever, every so often, because even though the kids want it to be about them, you know, when it's not about them, they still need to show need to know how to show up for others. So, you know, as parents, um, again, speaking just for myself, I do everything I can to make sure I show up for my kid, for my stepchildren. Um, I don't care how big or how little the event is. Um, it's important that we're there and that we show up for our children. And they're only going to be doing this probably once. They are only this age once. So showing up for them, encouraging them, um, is super, super important in, in building them up as children, um, for the children going for each other again, just kind of, you know, I, I think it's important that our kids go and do stuff for one another, but I don't think it needs to be a golden rule. If there's something else going on, you know, little, little Sally, your, your biological child has, um, a birthday party over at her best friend, Rebecca's house for the weekend, but it's your um, stepson Johnny's birthday. 
or not birthday, uh, baseball game. You know, I think that they can get out of stuff like that. You know, like, yeah, you have something else going on. That's all right. But trying to encourage them to show up for each other, um, maybe if not all the time, but at least some of the time. Yeah. I, I have a question. What's that? You have two sisters. I do. You, so I'm an, I was raised an only child. Yeah. You were not. Right. Did you, was that the expectation set in your home with your siblings that you all had to show up for everything? How did that look like? No, because you at, guys were not a blended I, family. It's but exactly I'm like how, how this is raised. right now. I'm like, my younger sisters, I obviously played hockey a lot growing up, sometimes every weekend. Um, I was always at tournaments or skate competitions um, growing up. My sisters were at a lot of them, but they weren't at every single one of them. Sometimes my sisters would have something else going on and they wouldn't go. Sometimes my parents would have to divide and conquer between the three of us. And, you know, my dad and I would be um, out of town overnight one day, you know, um, for a hockey tournament. But most of the time, both of my parents would always be there. Um, and that's what I would always remember. Now I can think back and I, I remember a few times my sisters weren't there, but my sisters would be there sometimes, but my parents were usually at all of my events. But I also remember going to my sister's events. It wasn't always all about me. I remember going to dance recitals growing up. I remember going to places that my sisters had going, but I also remember missing one or two, you know, I had something else going on. So if we have nothing going on, we're not just staying home doing nothing, but we are, we're showing up and we're keeping busy and we are always supporting our family and someone in our family was always supporting our family. Yeah. Did you, um, I'm just, I'm curious. Cause again, yeah. I wasn't raised this way, so I don't know. Did it matter to you if your sisters were there or not? Like, did you care when you looked in the audience and they weren't there? Were you like, that's a bummer? Or did it not matter because your parents were there and that's what mattered? Or did you not care if your parents were there? I don't know. What did you think no, about I, that? No, as a kid, you know, it, I probably would have told you, oh, it doesn't matter if my sisters come or not. But I remember as a kid, um, it probably did. I, you know, it, it changed the dynamics. It changes... Um, and it builds the circumstances, you know, it builds up what you have going on. It does, you know, it's like having a birthday party and only one or two people showing up versus having a birthday party and everyone shows up for you. You feel loved, you feel special and you might not be able to put your finger on that as a young kid. I mean, I probably couldn't have, and I probably haven't thought about it until we're talking about it right now. But now thinking back in hindsight, I'm like, it makes you feel important. It it does. It helps it helps build up your self esteem and your self worth by having people show up and support you. And it's kind of like we've talked about a long time ago, like the chore thing at home. You know, if you only have one set of kids doing chores and the yeah. other set not, or you know, there's something that's very bonding and unifying when you're all in the trenches together, right. you know, we all have to show up for each, each other. Then we're all, the all kids, in the trenches all the together. Kids hate mom and dad at the same time. Well, yeah. Like the, the expectations set across the board and there's something to be said that bonds and unifies, you know, and kids are just little brat holes. Like, let's be real. Right. I know I stole it, but, but let's be real. Like kids don't want to do anything. I mean, my two, my two, my two biological grumble about, going to each other's things and their siblings, right. never mind, you know? Um, so this, this is interesting because I wrote back, this was another blended life support group, um, question. So if you guys are interested in, in having support and having a community, you can go to Facebook, look up blended life support group. You do have to answer a couple questions, but, um, my, it's so fun. Cause I coach, I have clients that I coach and I see them in there responding to nice. different people. It's just, it's neat. It's a great community. So you can go join. You do have to answer questions. If you don't answer the two questions, you will automatically get denied. No exceptions. Um, so this, so what I think I wrote back to this is I, I was thinking back to our, our early blending days cause we've been at it for about 10 years and, um, in the beginning, I think we were very idealistic about this because I I do know that this is something that you, was important to you. Yeah, it's important to everyone. You, you want you want everything to be all. And this was not important to me. Right. We were we were different. Yeah. I I, I don't care. 
right? Yeah, like because I you just, didn't know any better. Correct. Right. Like this wasn't, I didn't see value in it necessarily. I mean, hypothetically, okay, but I didn't experience it. So for me, I'm like, whatever. But but this was important to you. So in the beginning, I feel like we were we were very idealistic about trying as best as we could with custody schedules, getting everyone to everything. And that was hard because I I have zero patience for I just I'm not a tolerant person for acting out and and throwing you know what I mean like just it was so much work and it was so much like we weren't even enjoying where we were at with everyone you know like it was so distracting if if people were you know whatever it was it was just really hard and so I was like this is stupid and I know as time go has gone on because it was ruining, you know, there was a point in time where all of us doing anything together was just like, like we stopped going on vacations. I'd rather be at work, right? Like that's not a secret. But I, I think the, so in the beginning it was very idealistic and we, as we've gone, we've gotten much more relaxed about it where we're not forcing kids. We just gave up on life. <laughs> we didn't. We didn't. But it was also like we're, we don't so much anymore – force uh, there are we pick our battles let me say that's what I'll say like graduation might be something that like graduation dinner right I do expect everyone to show up for graduation dinner and like everyone's going to celebrate this accomplishment you can invite a girlfriend or a friend if you want to come but uh, I do expect I don't know you if you'd like my girlfriend <laughs> <laughs> But you know what I mean? Like there are, it's like, I think the, the, the farther we get into blending our family in this topic, I think we've gotten really good at picking and choosing, you know, but I think that you have to have some kind of standard and I, you know, some kind of standard in the beginning and seeing how it works. And I think that that is how we did it. Doesn't make it right or wrong or good or bad. It's just, I think looking back backwards, it was very idealistic and we were doing it all and it wasn't fun till now it's kind of like more easygoing, more fluid, picking and choosing our battles. And it seems to be better when we are all together because we're not forcing people to go to everything and be so involved and up each other's butts that now the kids are, and maybe that's maturity, maybe that's age and stage in life too. But it seems to me now it's just a little bit easier. Like I, it's more enjoyable when everyone comes to do anything together. I don't know. Thoughts on that or. Yeah. It seems to be a little bit easier. Yeah. The easy part is no one does it anymore. So <laughs> it kind of, you know, but you get to the point where it's just like, everyone's just kind of doing their own things. But I, I think at the end of the day, um, whether you're, whether you are forcing your kids to go or not, it's important as parents and as step parents to show up for your children and your stepchildren. Yeah. Um, because at the end of the day, you are really the only ones that are really fighting for these kids that are really pouring into these kids, you know, whether there's, whether their step kids are, or their, or their, their step brother and sisters or their actual siblings are, um, is another point. And, and again, there's no right or wrong way for you guys to do this with your family. This is just something, um, that we have observed, uh, uh, something that I have observed growing up and with our own children, but, uh, yeah, it always, You've done, Seems I just want to like sing your praises for a, a moment because I will say, and you're much better than me at this and it challenges me a lot. You have showed up to, if you're physically able, you're there for your child, for my children. Like for, it, it, it doesn't matter. Like you're pretty consistent and you're always there. And it's just something that is, cause it, who wants to go sit through a five hour graduation? Nobody. Yeah. Well, so you know what? I, I'm grateful well, for that. Well, thank you. Um, it's important to me. It's important that the kids know that I am here for them and that we are a support group. And, um, it, again, it builds confidence, you know, yeah. and I've seen that over the years. It, it totally builds confidence, you know, which is why, even though I'll just put it out as, as an example, you know, my son being 16 years old can drive, can go anywhere he wants. You know, his, his thing he does right now is ride the dirt bikes. He can go at any point in time and just go ride and I can sit there and I can hang out or I could just not go. But the important part is that I'm showing up for them. I'm there for him. I'm part of his support team and his support group. And it just allows him to build, you know, um, just, uh, just a positive lifestyle, just knowing that people are there for you. So 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's super, super good. The, the last thing I want to touch on that she had mentioned, just because I, I know it's a common struggle, is like when you have all these kids and all these kids are in different places doing different things, it is hard to have time together as yeah. a couple because you have so many events that are divide and conquer. I think that was your term. Yeah, you but if you, weren't the, if you weren't the coach, if you're not the only one that can take your kid to do this stuff, you know, and you do have to divide and conquer, sometimes take your stepkids. Sometimes take the other role. Don't always be the one that just takes your kids to ride dirt bikes, you know. Um, if, I am, if I'm the one that has to you know, show up and take my stepdaughter to go do stum- something. Like see the Mario movie. Like, like, yeah, like <laughs> like see the Mario movie. That's what we got to do. You know what I mean? <laughs> Such like, a sacrifice. Yeah, we, we went and saw the Mario movie last week, me and my stepdaughter, because her mom and brother cheated on us and went and saw it without us and <laughs> made us really sad. So we went and saw it on our own. But yeah, anyways, you guys. Well, thanks for being here with us. If uh, If you struggle a little bit, in this blended family thing, give Julia a call or send her an email, becomingheardnow at gmail.com, or just go to her website, becomingheard at gmail.com, and she can help you. My website's just becomingheard.com. What'd I say? At gmail.com. Oh, sorry. Becomingheard.com is becoming my website. Heard. You can go book a free breakthrough session where we can just discuss and get clarity around what you want for yourself, why you're not having it now, talk about power. Um, talk about the difference between coaching and therapy. We go through a lot of things. So I would love the opportunity to connect and, and kind of lead you. Help you take control of your life, of your yeah. step parenting, step family, blended family lifehood. So thank yeah. you guys for being here with us. Yeah. Till next time. Thanks. All right. We'll talk to you guys next time. Bye. Bye.